My lightning talk is about changing your WordPress website's URL, same site, different name. Uh, it comes from wanting to save people from some of the frustration I experienced when I first had to do this in many ways. I wish I could go back to Passdale and, uh, and do this for him. Um, so how many of you have already experienced moving a WordPress site from one place to another? Um, okay, cool. How many have used a plugin for this? And how many of you are using WordPress command line tool? Not so many. Okay, cool. Um, and how many of you are just killing time to the end of the day? <laughs> <laughs> okay, no one. Okay, that's cool. No smart asses in the crowd. Um, the method I'm going to show you doesn't use any plugins. Uh, we're doing it fresh from scratch, so to speak. Or maybe I should show a tightrope. No, actually, it's safe. Um, and we are using the command line, so hopefully that won't be too scary for, uh, for anyone. Um, I'm, one of my goals is to hopefully show that it's actually it's pretty cool. So reasons for changing a URL, um, I think you probably are mostly all aware of this, but in case this twigs something like why, do, why would this apply to me, um, cloning your site to set up a test site, moving the site that you've just built to the production site, um, maybe you're moving from wordpress.com to your own site, or just changing the URL of the, your website in place because you've got a cooler URL. Uh, we're on the clock, so questions at the end. Um, more than happy to catch me in the hallway, and I mostly just wanted an excuse to use like that picture. I didn't even know Kirsten was presenting in front of me. So I'm Dale McGladry. I'm a developer with Affinity Bridge. Uh, we build uh, software for social good, um, social change. Um, we work with a bunch of different technologies, but the most important thing for today is we do WordPress. And in addition to building WordPress sites, we do uh, something called retainer maintenance for about 40 WordPress sites. And that's doing regular monthly site updates for our clients um, so that we can catch changes before they go live and, and fix them if they happen. Each of these sites has to have its own development site and needs to be synced to the production site. And that's how I've come to this knowledge that I'm hopefully gonna pass on to you today. Now, uh, we don't really have time to talk about how to move the data around, so I'm gonna assume that you all have your favorite way of doing that. There's lots of different ways. Um, it usually involves backing up the current site, moving it to wherever the new site's gonna be, restoring that stuff in place, and then updating your credentials and, and maybe your database prefix. And uh, you hit that moment, you refresh the browser, and it kind of sort of works, but it's not quite right. You press that first click. How many of you have experienced this? Uh, yeah, it's like, what's, what's going on here? And then you find out, oh, I have to change the domain inside, uh, inside of WordPress. It's like, why? This is like my biggest complaint about WordPress. I, I love how quickly you can build things, but why is this stuff hard-coded? Uh, as most of you probably already know, uh, WordPress has storage information in the file system and the database. So that's where we have to look to make these changes. Uh, this used to be really, really horrendous, but thankfully, uh, someone who I owe, like, coffee dinner, uh, wrote a tool, WordPress command line tool. It's available at wpcli.org. Lots of great information there on installing it and using it. And the good news is that most of the web hosts have it installed by Dream uh, by default. So, uh, for example, I use Dream, Dream Host for my personal stuff, and it's just there. So the odds are pretty good that, um, except for your local site, uh, you're already going to find it installed. Now, just a quick note, there's lots of great things besides what I'm going to show you in the WordPress command line tool. Um, shameless plug, I did a blog post on it. <laughs> Uh, five ways to work faster. Uh, so if you are interested in checking out all the things that it can do, like backups and, uh, and updates from the command line and stuff, um, check it out. But for today, the basics are pretty easy. It's 
type in uh, WP, that's the, the, uh, the tool's name. Search replace, the old name, the new name, it pops out a bunch of useful information, and it tells you how many replacements it's made, and it's done, or is it? First gotcha you need to know about is the tool tries to be a good citizen. It doesn't assume that all of the tables in the database are for your WordPress site. So it changes the tables that it knows are associated with WordPress. Some plugins it won't know about because reasons. And so you need to say, I want you to do all the tables. Now, if you do have other things in your database, you're gonna to have to do a quick audit to see if it's safe changing the, the domain name from your old site to your new site. For all the sites that I've dealt with which have an exclusive database, I've never run into a problem using the all tables fix or switch. Um, and if you do have to tweak which tables change, there's parameters where you can say include this, exclude that. The second thing to be aware of is the URL is stored two different ways, just the domain name and with the protocol in front of it, which is the HTTP, HTTPS. So if we just use that form I showed you before, it works great for the one scenario, but the second one, if we wanted to go HTTP to HTTPS, oops, it's still HTTP. And this one's actually really insidious because your site will sort of work, but some things won't quite, especially with browsers getting fussier about mixed content. So anytime that you're switching from one to the other, uh, you have to worry about it. If you're just going HTTP to HTTP or S to S, you're fine. If you are the solution, um, well, the solution is not this. If you say, aha, I'm just gonna switch it around, I'm gonna put that protocol on there. Well, that's great, you've changed the protocol now, but the places where it's just the domain didn't match, so it didn't get changed. And the solution is pretty easy, you just do it twice. So you change, the, uh, change it with the protocol, so HTTP, HTTPS, and then you do the second one and that catches the other instances. Or you can do it the other way around. Now, this might almost feel a little bit confusing, but I mention it because sometimes I forget that I'm switching HTTP to HTTPS. It's like, ah, I didn't make the change in that order. It's, don't worry about it, just do it the second, but you just have to modify your second one, the HTTP there. It's gonna be changed to new.com now. So you just have to remember to tweak it just a little bit. And we're good, right? We just changed it, all the, the URLs in the database. and. Yeah, uh, but there's a few other things we need to check for before we can actually get onto our site. I've only seen these parameters used, I think, on one site that I've ever dealt with, but if it's there, it's kind of nasty. This is in wp-config.php. It's really easy to change if it is there. And then, boom, yes, we can now log into the site. Even with iTheme security changing the site URL, we're all good, we can get in. We still might not be done though. If you have plugins that are URL locked, now you're gonna to have to go in and decide what you're gonna do with them. Um, if you have an unlimited site license, uh, unlimited number of sites, it's really easy. You just put in the site, if we're talking about say having a staging and a development site, you just put in all the URLs you're gonna use, you're good. Uh, if you are moving your site, make the change, obviously. Some plugins are actually, they'll complain at you, but they'll still work properly, so you can decide how to deal with that. And sometimes it's, you just have to decide, maybe if it's your development site, you're just like, yeah, I'm just gonna leave that a little bit broken. And then we're on to the file system. Now, for, again, a lot of the sites that, that I deal with, uh, the, all the plugins are good, don't have to touch the file system, but there are some spoilers out there, uh, and especially when they involve the theme, it's like, ah, my site, it looks awful. Uh, so the ones that, that I've had to deal with personally, and 
there really is, there's no tool for doing this. You just, it's gonna be a case by case basis. Uh, some plugins like Elementor are really kind. They actually give you a tool right in the uh, Elementor uh, menu system for changing the URL. You only really have to worry about this if you're changing the protocol from HTTP to S or back. Uh, otherwise, the database change works properly. More importantly, um, it puts files onto, into the file system, so it actually gives you a way of regenerating. And my co one of my colleagues tells me that, um, uh, Oh, I didn't write the name down. There's <laughs> another plugin that does that. Um, Revolution Slider, I think it is. Uh, gives you a tool for actually doing this as well. Other plugins, you might have to do a little bit more work. Uh, caching plugins, I must admit, I just do quick and dirty. I just disable them and re-enable them if I think that it's causing a problem. Uh, certainly just turning it off to see if that's an issue. Uh, as Kirsten pointed out, for troubleshooting. Uh, All-in-one event calendar, the only way I found of flushing its references to the old site is to literally switch the calendar theme to a different theme and then switch it back. And this plugin, I'm not sure where one of our, our people found it, WP Image Refresh, it's kind of a slider thing. It does something just really nasty where it caches stuff and you basically, edit and save any one of its image items and it refreshes the cache. Uh, and that's so, I mean, it, this actually doesn't feel too bad, but when you're trying to track these down, it can be really, really frustrating, especially if you're moving to a live site. But the, the good news is once you've sorted everything out, it gets really fast. If you're, you're wondering about, wow, this feels like a lot of work, we can, we can sync uh, a site in five to 10 minutes. Um, I goofed around with the Linux shell script for doing some of this. Uh, you're welcome to take a look. I, I found out there's just no way it could be production, but if you are interested in trying scripting this, it might, uh, it might give you some ideas. And one last tip, uh, link checker is a really good idea, especially if you're putting a site live it can surface some problems that you haven't found with missing, um, with URLs that haven't quite changed, but they're buried somewhere on a page, like maybe there was something strange. And I use one called Integrity, it's really bare bones, but it works, uh, but any link checker will do. And that's it, and I think we have time for one or two questions. Great, thank you. Uh, no, because it's actually your, it's, it's on the string and it's just a raw string replace. So it really has no idea of the context it's used in. So if it's, oh, I see what you're saying, like s slash slash or. Yeah, well, instead of s slash, when you say take out HTTP component, it's slash slash. So then any, is it HTTP or HTTP? Yeah, that would probably, that would probably work too. The, the danger is, again, since it's a string search, it might find a URL that's referring to something else if somebody has done an embed or something. And so if they've done an embed on another site, because this is searching like your, your content as well, so. Well, I get that, I'm saying it's like, so the old domain was http colon slash slash old.com. Yeah. The new one is new.com. Yeah. Uh, maybe I don't, it's something to try. I, it might work. Yes. <laughs> it does? Perfect. Um, it just says hard coding and protocol. Anyone else? Thanks so much. <laughs>